What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Garcia Toronto and this is Toronto Racing. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about sponsorships. Now when I first was looking for sponsorship, I really couldn't find any information or any help on the topic and I really had to figure out everything on my own. So this video is going to be very useful. Now before we start talking about it, we need to talk about what a sponsorship is. A sponsorship is a partnership between you and the company you're working with. So you reach out to the company so you can reach certain needs or have certain needs met and you also need to meet some of the needs from the company in a marketing perspective. So before we even talk about reaching out and knocking on a company's door to become a prospective sponsor, we need to define what our goal is and that's step one. So the very first step in sponsorship is defining your goal, what your end result is going to be. Now this is really for you, so when you put this in your proposal, you can present it to the companies that you want to work with. For example, some people want to build show cars and take it to the highest level and present their bills at SEMA. Some people want to start out in, let's say, grassroots drifting, work their way up to Pro-Am, or work their way up to a pro level of drifting or a pro level of motorsport. So you need that goal defined and outlined and ready to present to the companies you want to work with. So that's step one. Find out what your goal is and define it to the T. Another thing you want to do when defining your goal, show car, race car, is you want to be extremely dynamic. You want to be very different. What makes you stand out from the rest of the crowd and everybody else asking for sponsorship? For example, in my shoes, I noticed that not a lot of people were road racing or autocrossing Dodge Challengers for a reason. I learned that the hard way. So I found a gap in the market per se, and that's why I went that route. I knew I had something very unique and I could make it into something very unique as long as I put my head down and kept working. And that's what made me stand out amongst the rest. A lot of Mopars, no offense to anybody, are usually show cars or they're drag cars, but they're never road racing or autocross. So find what makes you unique and make sure you highlight that and point it out to the companies you want to work with. All right, step two is going to take a little bit of a left turn here because we're going to be talking about social media. That's right. Social media is the king of marketing and pretty much everybody knows that. So I read a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary V. If you don't know who Gary V is, definitely look him up. So the analogy in Jab, 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 Right Hook comes from boxing. You wouldn't go up to your opponent and start throwing right hooks at them because they would see it coming a mile away. You got to beat them down a little bit with jabs so you can tire them out and then you hit them with the right hook. So in Gary Vee's standpoint, he says that when you're marketing something or you're doing something on social media, you wanna hit your audience with content that derives of jabs. They can be funny posts, they can be informational posts, and then on the fourth one, you hit them with the right hook, which is usually a call to action, which is like, you know, click my YouTube video, watch my YouTube video, or something like that. So I took that idea and I twisted it a little bit and used it for my social media. What I would do is I would find three companies that I wanted to work with and then for the next three months I would tag them in all my social media posts. Now the reason why I did that is so when I would do the right hook which is asking for the sponsorship they can look back at my social media outlets see the content that I create good photos good grammar and they can see that I have what it takes to market their product in a positive and a professional manner. Now with that being said, you want to really look at your social media. You want to look at your grammar, are you cursing, um, what kind of content you're putting out because they really do look at this stuff because again, social media, digital media marketing is the king of marketing right now. So do yourself a favor and before you even start, sift through your social media, do a self audit and clean up anything that you think would paint you in a bad light. All right, so we're almost there. You've defined your goal. You found the companies you want to work with, you started tagging them on social media for three months, and now you're getting ready for that right hook, which is ask for the sponsorship. And one question I get asked all the time is, how do you find the sponsorships? So in a lot of websites for these companies, you can go to their website and go to the contact us, or they might even have a tab that straight up says sponsorship. Now they usually have an application process where you fill out all your information. And in that application process, you will always see that they ask for your social media outlets. It's very important because they want to look at your reach. How many unique eyeballs can your account get on their product? Again, return on investment, ROI, that's what companies are looking for. But at the same time, they're going to audit your social media, just like I told you to do before you even get to this point. So it is very important that your social media is up to par, it is clean, and it is very dynamic. So you got the three companies you want to work with, you found their website, you found their sponsorship 
um, tab on our website or under their contact us and you start filling it out and then there's usually a little link where it says you can attach your sponsorship proposal yes this is extremely important your sponsorship proposal now you can do what some other youtubers have spoken about you can do what you call a slide deck now in your slide deck and I can break this down in another video more in depth will be your about me uh, an introduction to yourself what you're doing what events you're going to for the entire year what race events what uh, car shows you're going to be featuring your ride and their products in and all your social media analytics and stuff like that to create your sponsorship proposal you can use some software such as powerpoint presentation i personally use a website called canva and i use the paid version to create high print colorful pdf presentations but they do have a free version the paid version has a lot more uh, cool things you can do with it but the free version will get you pretty far as well Again, it is extremely important to outline your entire year in your sponsorship proposal. So every car show you want to go to that your car is going to be featured at or every race event that you're going to do for the year. For example, some people who race, they'll do an entire year of grid life time attack. Some grassroots drifters will do an entire season or an entire year of drifting and so on and so forth. Another thing to add in your sponsorship proposal is any other sponsors you're working with or in the website that will also ask if you're working with any other sponsors and to list those companies down as well and i put an entire list of everything done to my car it shows commitment it shows that you've got a lot of time and a lot of money into your build uh, so one company asked me how long i've been building the car again it shows commitment to what it is you're doing and what it is that you're trying to achieve so that shows the company like is it worth their time and their effort and their money to invest into you if you're not as invested in what you're trying to do so very important um, if you're just starting out again you can just stick to your end goal it being like you're trying to reach a SEMA quality build or you're trying to reach you know a certain level of motorsport all right guys so let's recap the first step is to define your goal and find out what makes you unique compared to everybody else in the industry your next step is your social media strategy which is going to be your jab 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 right hook the next step is finding those companies online next step is doing your proposal and finally applying for the sponsorship and waiting to hear back another important thing to note is that if you're expecting just 100 percent free parts and sponsorship from the get-go it's not going to happen uh, i myself have had to work very hard in order to get the sponsorship that i do have and it still costs me money now i can't disclose what kind of sponsorship i receive but a good rule of thumb and this is something that i've always done is i save up the entire amount of money for the part that i'm trying to purchase i know right and then i apply for the sponsorship sometimes it might be like 10 percent and it can go all the way up right so any amount helps uh, a good friend of mine told me that a long time ago and he said just apply any amount helps in the long run and he was absolutely right so if you do go for the sponsorship and you do get approved nine times out of ten it's not going to be a hundred percent free parts so if it's not free it's still going to cost you a portion it's going to be at a discounted rate which is better than nothing but again as long as you have that money set to the side you can go ahead and get that sponsorship price all right so let's fast forward you've put in the work you've been doing the jab 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 right hook for the last three months uh, on the fourth month you get a sponsorship or maybe you picked up a few and it's working out for you but now is where the work begins now is where you have to do all the work that you promised those companies you would do and prove to them that you were worth the investment so on your proposal and stuff happens but all the events that you label that you laid out that you would be at showcasing the car doing the social media posts doing youtube videos whatever it may be now you got to hold yourself 100 percent accountable to that and every company does it different they'll say you know like maybe uh two posts a month or a video a month or something along those lines so you make sure you hit that mark every single time so now that you're sponsored my best piece of advice is to put in the work and give 110 percent that means always hit your mark. If they want two posts a month, you do six posts a month. If they want one video a month, you do three videos a month. And that just shows that you're committed and you're invested just as much as they are. And of course, they're happy, you're happy, and then everybody's happy. And in the future, if you wanna work with them again and they see that you put in the work and you, and you uh, stay true to your word, they might wanna work with you again in the future. So again, uh, the energy that you put in, it won't be a waste. And my last great piece of advice that was given to me by another driver is to stay in contact with your sponsors. If you don't know what they need, how do you know what you can give them, right? So 
communication is key. I like to send maybe an email every uh, about every month and see if there's anything that they want a written review, if they want different style of photographs, if they want different style of video. Um, that way their needs continue to be met. All right, guys, so that's pretty much what I have for uh, today's sponsorship video. Uh, you know, put your head down, put in the work, create your sponsorship proposal, outline what it is you want to accomplish, and good things will come. Now, it is going to take work, but it's totally worth it. And if you get told no or if you get denied sponsorship, you know, don't let that discourage you. Keep putting in the work. I got told no by one company, I think, three times, and the fourth time for me was the charm. So, you know, just persistence is key. Um, the handful of yeses that I've gotten have been, you know, totally worth it because uh, I've been putting in the work and I've gotten countless no's, but it hasn't discouraged me because at the end of the day, you've really got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And you get the experience of working hand in hand with companies on a new level, you know, so the whole experience as a whole is really good. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them or feel free to DM me on Instagram at Toronto Racing. I always answer all the questions. And if you guys like these videos, hit that like button, leave a comment below. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, peace out.